two in the run game. John McMullen, who is the hardest working man in Philadelphia sports media, he's all over the place. He comes in with us now here, and we appreciate him finding some time. Again, John, you know, to me, it just looked like the second time through, John, that Ron did all the things that they were so successful at and just shut down every single one of those things that they had in that game at FedEx. Jam the receivers at the point of attack last night. <clears throat> they didn't give them like any kind of rhythm. I, I, I don't want to lead the question here. How did, how did, what was your takeaway from last night? I, I, I mean, I, the, the Eagles didn't play well. I, I, I think it's as simple as that. They didn't play well. I, you know, I called them the most well-rounded team in football for the first nine weeks. It, and it was interesting because it was a well-rounded loss. I mean, the, the offense was bad. The defense was bad. The special teams, the coaching. I, I thought for the first time they were out coached. You mentioned Ron Rivera, Scott Turner, uh, Jack Del Rio. Uh, they out coached the Eagles. Um, too long to make adjustments. Uh, they ran the football four times in the first half. Um, no complimentary nature. You knew the Eagles were up against it from a run support standpoint. Um, sometimes the offense has to help out, you know, um, and going up tempo uh, in the second quarter and you having a couple three and outs that had like a Chip Kelly vibe, like not understanding the situation, not understanding what's going on. Um, so I had an issue with the coaching staff and, and defensively, look, the Eagles have this mentality. They don't want to, uh, they want to play light boxes. They want to eliminate explosive plays in the passing game. And when it works, it, it, it works really well. Um, and it works really well when Jordan Davis is out there, Jordan Davis isn't out there. So to me, you got to commit more bodies, uh, to the run game and stop the run game. And look, you got to hold down the fort until Jordan gets back till the big guy gets back because these defensive tackles, they do not hold up well, um, at the point of attack. So, they got to make some changes with Jonathan Taylor on the horizon and 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 uh, Aaron Jones and Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley. If if Jordan Davis isn't going to be there, you can't keep just playing cover two shells and quarters coverage and cover six. You got to you got to commit more bodies uh, to stopping the run. John, that I'll means say this: giving to up you. an explosive play. Sorry, Dan, occasionally. You, you got to play that game. See, John, to me, when you're having problems <laughs> stopping the run, you don't get passive. You become more aggressive. First and second down, run blitzes. Fill them gaps. Get in there and help these guys out because you're right. What's happening is these tackles are getting blown off the ball. They're getting blown into the scrape lanes of the linebackers, which automatically pushes them off the ball. And last night, John, the number one thing Washington did, because – John, if you look at the numbers, I mean, Heineke, 17 to 29, 211, not, not spectacular at all. Um, Robinson, 86 yards, 26 carries. McLaurin was great last night, yeah. eight for 128. But the thing they did great last night, they were third and three, third and two, all night yep. long, and they won first and second down. That's And, John, 81 plays to 47, you have no chance of winning that when you're constantly having the opponent in third and two. Yeah, that was the issue with the Eagles last year, um, and that's why they moved up to get Jordan Davis because they wanted, wanted to win on first down. I, I think a lot of people don't realize the impact. They they look at the number of snaps Jordan Davis played, and it wasn't a lot, and they look at the stats. He's not a stats player, um, and, and they get focused on that. But when first and 10 turns into second and 10, right. all of a sudden you can do a lot of different things on the defensive side of the ball. When it's second and five, you're limited. When it's third and two, third and three, is you, you're really limited. Um, yeah, and that's what happened to the Eagles uh, yesterday. And, um, yeah, they, they played a poor game. They played how, a poor game. How about this, John? Outside of the Washington first game, the edge rushers on this team, it, it resembles last year, doesn't it? Uh, no, I mean, Hassan Reddick's 
much better than what they had last year. Uh, Josh Sweat, you know, set the tone of the, the game with the strip sack. Um, it, it, they have good edge rushers. But the problem is, you know, and I don't even know if it's a problem. I mean, it, look, it's over overreaction Tuesday, not a Monday. Overreaction. It's first loss of the season. This is still a very good team. Absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm a little concerned with the injuries, Dallas Goddard. Um, going down as well. I mentioned Jordan Davis, Avante Maddox is out. A.J. Brown was banged up uh, yesterday, wasn't himself. I'm a little concerned with the injuries, but they're not season-ending injuries. They're not – all those guys will be back. This is still a good football team. Um, <laughs> but when – my my concern defensively is when things – are not perfect you you got to mix it up like my my first question is all right you know why isn't nicobe dean on the field why not get a little bit bigger take josiah scott off the field i know you want to play nickel everybody wants to play nickel all the time but guess what you can't stop the run put an extra linebacker on the field um, you need to get back into those third and long situations that's where players like Hassan reddick and Josh Sweat show up um, on third and three. Hassan Reddick's not going to be uh, an edge, not not going to be a guy who 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 stops the run, who sets the edge, uh, who's going to push people back. That's not his strength. His strength is a double digit sack guy. His strength is a strip sack guy. And when it's third and thirteen, he looks like a world beater. When it's third and two, no, you know, he's not equipped for that. So you 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 gotta get in, in the situations you're you're successful with. And you know, from the secondary standpoint, at some point we're killing the coaches, and rightfully so. You can kill the coaches, but guys gotta perform. That Absolutely. was the worst game of the year for Darius Slay, worst game of the year for Fletcher Cox. The Eagles played the same coverages they always do. Quarters, cover two, cover six, same coverages. There's no communication with Darius Slay and James Bradbury and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and Marcus Epps. What happened? They're letting Terry McLaurin run through these zones. They're dropping them in coverage. And look, when you drop guys in zone coverage, it looks ugly. But that's just the lack of communication. That's all that is couple last questions for you, John. Um, you know, in, you mentioned something. You know, you know, John, two games in 29 days. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. look, I'm not giving anybody an off-ramp here. But the one thing you want to do is, and I remember when we were playing, if you were playing and you were playing with momentum, you wanted to keep that thing going. You wanted to stay in a ritual. You wanted to stay in habit. You wanted to stay in all the things that you were doing. Basically, what I'm saying is, you wanted to be in a routine. Winning is that kind of routine. And again, no no off ramps here, John. But eleven days, and you weren't better prepared for that. It just seems that it, it, they seemed a little chaotic last night and how they were approaching their offense last night because they thought they were going to do the same stuff they did in the first game, and it just seemed like a lack of preparation too by players and coach. Yeah, I, I, I mean. I, I think they took this game for granted. I've, I've been talking all year about, you know, it was interesting. Every team has these games. You saw Kansas Absolutely. City. Kansas City lose to Indianapolis. You saw what happened to Buffalo. I mean, uh, back-to-back with the Jets in Minnesota. Um, the Eagles hadn't had this type of game until Washington. There's no doubt. You know, I was talking to, to one Eagles player. Um off the record, uh, but you know, he, he he said we we bleeped around with them too much. You know, they they thought they were going to waltz in and 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 win this game rather easily, uh, and all of a sudden they're in a the dog bite. It's interesting. The third game in twenty nine days. There's nothing they can do about it. They have the no. bye week and then the mini bye week back. It, it it was a bad situation. I was a little bit concerned with Russ coming into that game. 
But you know what, Dan? They came out well. They came out, like I said, you know, they got caught with the roughing, the punter penalty, and you say, oh, here we go. But then the strip sack. And then we scored on the first series too, yeah, John. Three plays, 18 yards because of the strip sack. Yeah. And bang, seven nothing. And you're saying, all right, they are going to blow this team out. And even when Washington scored, then they came right back with the Dallas Goddard touchdown. So they played well early, and then they got in this malaise, and they they held. You know, Washington did everything. I talked on the Jacob Sports uh, uh, pregame show because it's not brain surgery. You you knew what Washington wanted to do. Oh yes, they wanted to run the football. They wanted to shorten the game. They wanted to keep the offense off the field, and they did exactly what they wanted to do. And the Eagles just coaching, offense, defense, they gave them every opportunity. But here's the good news. The glass is half full. They still should have won the game. <laughs> you know, as poorly as they play, Quez Watkins doesn't make a dumb play. He makes a great play and then a dumb play. They win the game. Um you know, the Dallas Goddard uh, face mask. Who knows what happens at that point if, if the officials make an easy call. Um, you know, that that turns the football over, gives Washington three more points. Uh, they had three chances to go down and win the game. If Quez Watkins just stays on the field, they probably win the game. They probably go in and score. They were moving the football. So, you know, they were sloppy. They were lackadaisical. They took that team for granted. The coaching staff had a poor game plan. They didn't adjust. And they still could have won. So there's your glasses half full. Finally, John, injuries. This is kind of a two-part final question here for you. The impact you think that um, Dallas Goddard has on the offense going forward could be significant time. Haven't heard a number of games yet, maybe one or two. Not, I don't know any. I don't know anything more than what I've been reading here, and also the Jordan Malata injury. I mean, I got to say it. Since that shoulder injury, he yeah. has regressed massively. Um, first hit on the Dallas Goddard's importance to the offense moving forward, and then I'd like to get your thoughts on Malata. Yeah, I mean, I I've said Dallas is the best pure football player on this team. He is the best uh pure football player on the Philadelphia Eagles. So it's a big loss. You don't replace players like Dallas Goddard. The good news is, you know, they're still doing more tests, but they don't think uh they're gonna need to put him on injured reserve. So that means they don't think he's gonna miss four weeks. Uh and that says two or three week injury. You can persevere with that. Um, you're not going to have the impact in the passing game, whether it's Jack Stoll, Grant Calcaterra is probably not ready to play. Tyree Jackson's probably going to be activated this week. Maybe he can give you something in the passing game, but they're not going to be Dallas Goddard. I mean, there's no way. Um, as for Jordan Mylotta, yeah, you're right. He's he's playing he's he's playing through a very painful shoulder injury. So. Um, I don't know if he's regressed as much as, you know, he's fighting through an injury. Um, and, you know, a lot of times coaches uh, really respect that uh, because he's better than the alternative. Um, is he up to his typical standard? No, because he's he is dealing with uh, a lack of uh, – he doesn't have great range of motion with it, uh, doesn't have his typical strength, but he's out there, he's fighting, he's competing. And I think Jeff Stoutland and Nick Sirianni and everybody is, you know, tipping their cap to him. But, yeah, it's going to be all season. Um, it's not getting better when he's out there getting it whacked. Uh, but you got to give him credit for fighting through it. I he do, is, and he's, he, he's getting beat on the edge, though, because, like you said, John, he just can't extend. Yeah. He's trying to slide his feet and the guy gets a step on him. He can't extend. That guy's getting a corner on him. And that's why they're getting around him and getting pressure on the quarterback. But as you said, I mean, look, I got I call Jack Driscoll the Swiss Army knife. You know, you can kind of play him up and down the line of scrimmage, but he's not a front line guy. No. And 
Andre Dillon. No, they do have Andre. Andre, you know. Is he going to see more playing time, you think? Or do you think it's just they're going to roll with it and just they're just going to yeah, keep roll with it. If he can play, they're going to, you know, he's, he's still dominant in, in the running yeah, game. In the run game. Which is, uh, you know, I I was surprised. The, the Eagles, you know, they ran it four times in the first half and they were all successful and they didn't run it. I, I don't know why. Um and then they they woke up and they came out the second half, ran the ball successfully, went down and scored. Um, he's still there. He's you know that offensive line is still the strength of this team, and he's a big part of it. But you're right when you compare him to last year, when you co- compare him to healthy Jordan Mailata, uh, he's not playing at that level, and it's because of the injury. Absolutely. I mean, the first four games he was pancaking people. Uh, two at least, uh, you know, two every game. He's throwing guys down on their head. I mean, he was just dominant. So, John, I appreciate it, man. I mean, and again, like you said, John, it's a good football team. You're going to run into this kind of stuff here. Okay, you just what you don't want to do is keep making it a habit, you know. And I, I, I don't think this is a four a four quarter issue. It started in Houston when they started running the ball the way they did. They went over one thirty against the Eagles. And that's a very limited football team. And now you've got a football team in Indianapolis, John, that kind of looks like Washington. They could stop the run. They can run the ball. Taylor's probably the third best back in the game. You got you got Matt Ryan in there. I'm not saying Matt Ryan MVP, Matt Ryan, but well, he's better you know, than Sam Ellinger, right? you know. But, amped up a little bit yeah. for him. I, I think this is going to be an interesting ball game when they play the Colts. Yeah, I mean they gotta they gotta they gotta load up the box a little bit more. They just can't keep playing run defense the way they're they're playing run defense without Jordan Davis. They're acting like he's there, and you can't just just like I said, you're not gonna insert Grant Calcaterra and say do what Dallas Goddard does, <laughs> um, and you can't insert Marlon Tui Peloto and say do what Jordan Davis does, and they've been doing that for two weeks now. Uh, little Marvin Wilson in Houston as well. Come on. You can't do that. And Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Milton Williams. Those those guys are three techs. Those guys aren't big run defenders. Um so they 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 have to they have to put more people, they have to put an extra body in 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 the box if they want to stop. Guys this like is Taylor. why I talk to you, John. Yeah. This is why I talk to you because three techniques are so different than two techniques. And there's, when, when, when you're two gapping, you're 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 told to keep the scrape lanes for the linebackers, be able to go up and down the sidelines the way they are. And when you got three technique guys who are used to getting penetration under a Jim Schwartz defense, and you're asking them to two gap, there's a twofold factor here, John. First, buying in. And to do that, because you're used to making plays in the backfield, now you're asked to do something. It's a completely different technique and skill set and yeah. mindset too, John, for yeah. D tackles not to get penetration. Yeah, and they're play- they're playing the Fangio scheme, so it's you know they call it gap and a half. It's not it's not true to gap, but you know that's why Fletcher was upset last year because he spent years with Jim Schwartz. Go get the quarterback. Go get upfield. Uh, but I'll tell you this about Jim Schwartz as well. You know, if they were having trouble defending the run, you know, he's going to put another body. So everybody has one gap, one gap, one gap, one gap, run fit, run fit, run fit. And they did a good job with it. Maybe the Eagles have to do more of that. A little single high safety, have everybody, you know, in their run fits until Jordan Davis gets back. You, you you have to utilize what you have. And and to me, you just can't keep playing what you want to play and just in certain players who can't do it. That's right. And uh, Jim Schwartz, by the way, he's a consultant in Tennessee for Mike Vrabel, and that's why that defensive front is playing some pretty good football right now. They're the three seed right now in the AFC. So, hey, John, thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Don't forget, everyone, Burt's 365, pre- and post-game. You see John all the time. He puts great stuff up on the Jacob Sports uh, site that we have. I watch it all the time. I get up, and I'm in my bed watching you guys. I don't want to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm watching you guys (laughs) in the morning. 
And by the way, just do me a favor. Tell Jody to lay off the Jets. They're not that good. And the most famous Jet is Fireman Ed. <laughs> yeah, Fireman Ed is back. Remember, he 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 boycotted the Jets for a while, but he's back. He couldn't stay away. He couldn't stay away. <laughs> I always thought Fireman Ed was Jody. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, John. John McMullen, don't forget to catch out his work. All right, let's take a brief time out. Please hit the like button. We'll expand a little bit more on what John just said. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Don't wait until after Thanksgiving.